G'day viewers, it's Michael here again and welcome back to Single Racer. And now today's video came about by a great comment by one of my subscribers, Proctor TV. And in this comment that I'll show you here, he mentioned that he saw a video comparing Project Cars 2 to Automobilista 2 and wanted to get my take on what I thought about putting the two together and comparing both their force feedback and the physics. But of course the risk of doing this type of video is I'll come across as either a Project Cars 2 hater or an Automobilista 2 fanboy. And you know, the answer to that is uh, yes and yes, but I, I'm not, I, I like Project Cars 2, I just didn't think it got the support. But so what I want to do in this video is not say, look, I dislike Project Cars 2 and I love um, Automobilista 2, but I actually want to give you hopefully a, like, a, like a physical representation as in you able to see how the cars handle in each sim. And I'll talk about why I formed those opinions of the two sims, but not just through talk, but actually try and show you through the physical nature of how the car handles, how I formed my opinion. But in order to do this fairly, I've got to pick the same car and the same track. But unfortunately, I'm pretty sure that there is only actually one car that is common to both sims, and that's the Caterham 620R. So uh, in Proctor's comment, he talked about that he saw the video on Brands Hatch. So I'll avoid that track and do it on one of my favorite tracks, Red Bull Ring instead, and uh, or known in Automobilista 2 as Spielberg, and, and we'll compare the car on that same track. But I have to cover off just a couple of things to make it fair first. And that is talking about my wheel again, because unfortunately, I'm sure you've heard this so many times, but you know, I use the basic Logitech G29, but I probably don't set it up the way most people do. And if we come over here, so in both sims, given that if you took the negative of Automobilista 2 as being Project Cars 2 DLC, they're naturally set up the same way but I calibrate the wheel tighter. So if you see here, I calibrate it so that it's a tight turning circle, so that when I turn the wheel, this uh, little marker here is here. In other words, from when I turn, I turn from six to 12, and that's the most I generally turn. So like a Formula One uh, wheel kind of, that's what I always talk about. But to balance that out, I always set the wheel sensitivity to 100 because what that does is from very slow speed to almost uh, being standing still to full speed it has that same turning circle over the arc of the whole speed of your car uh, and it becomes a little jittery if you don't have the steering sensitivity changed from 50 to 100 and the other thing is of course force feedback given that they're both done on the same engine is exactly the same except that they uh, Project Cars 2 has an extra volume slider uh, but but all other three are set exactly the same so all things being equal in both sims I'm going to try now and uh, do a fair comparison based on my own feelings but with the knowing that I set up the wheel a lot tighter than most people do. So now let's move on to the comparison. And so one final thing before we do this, because it's the only way to be fair uh, to compare both sims is I have to do it in VR because that's the way I normally race. And to do it on a monitor would be uh, do it injustice as far as I have to drive the way I normally drive. So what I'm gonna do here is you can see uh, the number eight, I'm going to pick the lowest non-setup car and load it as a ghost car and drive against that and then give my opinion on how the car feels and handles while trying to go for a, a you know, just a time trial time because the good thing about driving the um, Caterham on 
red ball ring is that I haven't done a time on that before. So it's a, a dead honest comparison, but I have to do it in VR unfortunately, so apologies if it is a bit shaky, but that's the only way I can do it to be fair. So now uh, I'll load the Powell K ghost car and let's compare the two sims together. All right, so we have Pal K's ghost car loaded, and let's take off and see how we do. And the first thing I notice when going down the straight, because I've played a lot of um, Automobilista 2 in this car, is just the general sense of vagueness in the middle. You know, it's hard to feel what's going on as you probably could see there now in fairness you when you go from sim to sim you've got got to kind to of, you've got to kind of adjust to each sim's quirks so to be fair um you know i've just probably got to do a lap or two to get dialed in but the thing that is immediate or there's two things that i notice in project cars too one is that even though I'm actually using a force feedback file, and that's the Christian's force feedback, to try and make it even better, see, it's so vague. I don't get any sense of what the car's doing, even with that file, as good it is as it is. What I feel more is just um, force against the wheel. See, I, I don't feel I'm feeling the tires I just feel I'm feeling a general sort of heaviness or force against the tyres there. The other thing that is common to me in Project Cars 2 is the way the car rotates or pivots. To me it's like there's a pin placed exactly where most cars radiator is in the front. And what it does is that I don't feel I've got control of the car. I feel that it's pivoting on that axis of the pin where the radiator is. And the other thing that I've just realized coming straight from Automobilista 2, because I've got a Sunday Sub Showdown this weekend, um, an online race in other words, is that I'm noticing I can't steer this particular car in, in Project Cars 2 by the throttle. Now I'll try and show you here, but like I do this technique where I dab on the throttle to get the rear end to spin around and I just can't do it here. It's, it's really quite surprising when you come from playing one sim constantly and then come to the other sim as the comparison. So here, see I'm trying to stab on the throttle, that's my normal technique, to get the rear end to come around but it doesn't want to do it. Here I normally do it a lot, so I turn in and see, it understeers, but I can't dab on the throttle. See, I'm trying to kick the throttle to get it to spin. So this is going to be, a, see, it just understeers. It's going to be a great comparison to show you in Auto, Automobilista 2 why I think that has generally the better force feedback and physics when you compare the two directly. So. I'm, I kind of, at least, I'm, I'm getting the feel of the car now. I'm doing better laps. So let's try for one more lap and just see how it goes. I'll, I'll kind of talk less and just focus on trying to do a better lap. So slow in, fast out here like I normally do. That's much better. I'm definitely not going to catch this guy. He's quite quick. But see, this is the feeling I get. It's not. It's like I can't really drive the car. So, to me, that's the key difference. I'll, I'll just say this. When I play, play Project Cars 2, not only does it, do I struggle with this, it's got this irritating, trebly sound to most of the car engines. But I feel like I'm not driving the car. So, say through here as an example. I turn in. I would normally dab on the throttle, see I can't get it turned around, I can't, it's like it's, os it's um, oscillating or rotating on that pin in the radiator, 
and I don't feel I have control of the car. I just feel like, uh, so, okay, I'll say that differently. I don't feel I'm driving the car. I just feel like I'm trying to control the car in what the force feedback gives me, but it's not giving me enough to feel that I'm driving the car properly, like a real car. See there, I've got no, there's no feeling about what the car is doing. So this is going to be very interesting now to go to Automobilista 2 as a direct comparison to see the difference from your own eyes seeing what I'm doing on the track. So let's park her up here. That's about the best I can do given the short amount of practice. But mind you, I've been driving this car quite regularly, so I'm used to it. So let's let's exit out and see how I did. And sorry for the shouting if that's the you know, you always shout over the car. Now I definitely clearly didn't beat the guy in um I don't think he was in 10th spot. I think maybe 8th. Yeah, 8th. So I'm clearly not in the top 10. Not there. Not there. I, I, I didn't take notice of what time I did, to be honest. So, uh, oh gee, <laughs> I didn't do too well at all. So 37th spot. Okay, well that's not too good. So let's now see how I do in Automobilista 2. Okay, so now here we are in Automobilista 2 and I'm just going to do the same thing. So I haven't done a time troll in this combo either in Automobilista 2 and I'm just going to lo load sorry, the lowest uh, non-setup ghost car which is the number 10 there, you Daniel, and do the same thing in Automobilista 2. So let's check out that now. Okay folks, so as we load the U Daniel ghost car, let's go for a few flying hot laps. Oh, and the first thing I notice is just how much more powerful or hard to control this car is in the sim. But I just realized that I forgot to say in the other, or the Project Cars 2 hot lapping is that in this sim you get four choices of this vehicle and this is the most powerful but I never got a sense of that power see I'm struggling to keep it under control I never got a sense of that power in Project Cars 2 it was just like tame or probably the best word is numb there was no feeling of the power of this car so some people will say oh the handling in this sim is ridiculous you know it's just too too hard but Without being arrogant or smart in any way, a lot of us have never drive, driven race cars in real life. That's why we do sim racing, is to mimic the feeling of racing in real life. Now, a lot of people have, and they could probably be the best to say whether or not it's realistic. But the thing that I find when I'm driving this, and I'm struggling to keep it under control in this first lap as I get used to it, you know, going from sim to sim, you gotta get dialed back into how a sim behaves. But the feeling, the immediate feeling that I get personally is that I've moved that pin that I talk about as I struggle to get used to it again from the front radiator to the center of the car. And what I mean by that, it's what I call 50-50 weight distribution. So I've gone from just steering the car in Project Cars 2 and trying to keep it on the track to what I feel like I'm doing here is controlling how much power to give it through throttle steering. Now one thing I do is I do a technique called like dabbing the throttle. So like I'll try and show you here. So the car wants to understeer and now I dab like that on the throttle and brings the rear end and it's fantastic. It's such a great feeling. So I feel when I'm holding the virtual wheel in my VR in Automobilista 2, I feel like I'm controlling the car rather than the car controlling me. And it's all by the throttle. Now look, power on, power on. Absolutely fantastic feeling once you get used to it. So the key thing when people say, you know, oh, it's too hard or it's too unrealistic, I wouldn't argue that point. 
a lot of the cars still need dialing in. And remember, we're still in COVID. I'm still in lock, uh, stage four lockdown. So given how much work they still need to do, I totally understand that and would not disagree at all. But what I feel that the force feedback or more accurately, the physics, physics of, um, so I'm trying to concentrate, of Automobilista 2 gives you is the feeling of what I call pressing or squeezing the toothpaste on the throttle. So I'll try and show you here. So, so like I ease off, dab the throttle, turn in and just feed the throttle as I come out. Same thing, turn in, dab the throttle, now it rotates and I feed the throttle as I come out of the corner. And it's so realistic when you get it right that I just feel this sim is my second favorite to order uh, to sorry um, Assetto Corsa same thing again look at how well I can come out of the corner now that I'm dialed in to the car's power and that's purely from feeding the throttle or squeezing the throttle you know halfway down but also at times I'll try and do it here dabbing the throttle so hard dab so see it's un now dab and the rear end comes out beautiful. It just gives me the feeling like I'm controlling the car the whole time. And uh, it's very rare to me uh, to get that in a, in a sim. To me, there's only three. R Factor 2, Assetto Corsa, and this sim that give me that feeling where like I'm just controlling the car purely on my throttle inputs. Absolutely fantastic. And that's why I love this sim, even though it's still what I understand and don't disagree with a work in progress. I absolutely think this sim is brilliant based on that there dabbing, just the car control that it gives you is awesome. But you've got to get used to it. It isn't easy, you know, it is hard to drive some of these cars, but it should be in real life too. That's, that's where I feel that the, the weight of the car in the physics is very real. You know, it is hard to drive. That's why we do sim racing. They're not supposed to be easy. So as I park it up here, I hope that helps you as far as, um, you know, my take on the differences between uh, not only the force feedback, but especially the physics between the two as I settle my heart rate down now and. Let's see how we did. I, I've clearly beaten the ghost car, but I'm not sure how I've done. So let's go out and see where I ended up here. And that's what I mean. It's the, the control. It's not about the time. It's about the control of the car that makes you feel like it can be faster. At least for me anyway, given the way I set up my wheel. So I feel I have much more control of the car as we wait to go and see the time and oh fifth spot well there you go and I, i'm not being smart i'm just saying that it's that feeling of the car control that gives you a better time so now what i'll do is i'll load up one of the other caterums the less powerful caterum i think it's called the light or something and we'll go power sliding around one of the best tracks in um Automobilista 2 that you might not be aware of called Ibarra and so now let's power slide around this brilliant track for a couple of laps to show you that car control using the th throttle input to keep the car under control. So this is Michael signing out for Single Racer. I'll catch you next time. I hope this comparison helped you. See you later and let's go power sliding hot lapping. See ya. Mm-hmm. <laughs>